In America, at any given day, there's 450,000 people awaiting trial who are detained. After a defendant is arrested, usually within about 24 hours, they appear in front of a judge who has to make a high-impact decision whether or not to detain the defendant pending trial. So historically, these decisions are made based on intuition and experience. The worry is that these decisions are prone to biases, both implicit and explicit. How do you decide whom to detain? One answer that has been given recently is we should use algorithms to help determine this. You know, your statistical algorithm spits out this number, which is estimated from historical data, and says, given what we know about the defendant, this is how likely they are to commit another crime. One thing about, about human judges is that like one judge may be very different than another, and algorithms don't have that inconsistencies. In response to this, uh, there's been pushback from organizations, including ProPublica, uh, that these scores may be potentially biased against black defendants. Now, although these measures were crafted with the best of intentions, I am deeply concerned that they may inadvertently undermine our efforts to ensure individualized and equal justice. Our paper is an analysis of what exactly it means for scores to be biased and what are sort of the tensions um, that arise when we attempt to, to create fair risk scores. So fairness is a complicated question and there's no consensus on what that means. So there are sort of three popular ways of measuring whether these tools are fair. The simplest definition of fairness is simply that the algorithm doesn't use race at all when making a decision. The problem is that it's easy to encode race uh, accidentally or intentionally through other covariates. The second is called statistical parity. So this says that different groups should be detained at equal rates by the algorithm. And the reason why this perhaps isn't the best measure of fairness is that some groups might reoffend more often than others. For example, men reoffend more often than women. And so equalizing the detention rates between men and women seems like a perverse consequence of trying to satisfy statistical parity. ProPublica pointed out that one of these algorithmic risk tools had a much higher false positive rate for black defendants than for white defendants. What that means is that black defendants who did not go on to reoffend had a much higher chance of being assigned to, to a high risk group. What we show in our paper is that equalizing false positive rates means applying different standards to defendants of different races. So in the Broward County, Florida example that ProPublica used, it would mean holding white defendants to a higher standard than black defendants. This approach probably violates uh, the Equal Protection Clause of the 14th Amendment. Adhering to these definitions of fairness means a higher expected crime rate, and it also means that you have to detain people whom the algorithm deems to be low risk. Our definition of fairness is that people who are equally risky should be treated equally. So if you have two defendants, white or black, that are rated as having a 20% chance of committing a violent crime, both are either detained or both are released. In light of this work, there's a few approaches we can take going forward. One possibility is simply to stop using algorithms. The problem with that is that judges are effectively trying to do the same things that algorithms are doing, but are usually worse at it. The second possibility is to use a double threshold algorithm to apply one standard for whites and another standard for blacks. By doing this, we can guarantee that various formal notions of fairness are satisfied. The problem is that this violates fundamental notions of equal protection. Finally, we can continue using algorithms to estimate risk and then apply a single threshold to these risk scores. And so you need to think about the implications of that and whether you're comfortable doing that. You're left with a difficult decision. Algorithms aren't going to completely replace human judges. They're only used as a tool to help judges make these decisions. One thing that we know about human decision making is that they're prone to biases, both implicit and explicit, and algorithms are here to help us make better decisions.